Woof! Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday night. Two Dogs Digs Hall Pass with me. That dog. And downstairs. I'll be bringing him on in a minute. Good dog. But since it is uh, a title that I came up with that I just thought, you know, it just makes me want to sing. Maybe. Some folks like to get away, take a holiday from the neighborhood, up a flight to Miami Beach, or to Hollywood, but we're taking the car across the border, the in line. We're in a New York estate sale. Here you go. <laughs> Let's see what Rick thought of that. I couldn't hear the music behind you. Oh, you just heard me singing. So you looked like... Oh, okay. Well, I was just singing to music that was playing on my computer. <laughs> oh, yeah. well. I'm not miming. Oh, well. You hear mostly the time. I'm not on mute. I don't know what happened there. I tried singing. I can't see it. That's the problem. I had to open up something in front of me, so I couldn't see what, I, what anything was looking like. Anyway... It's a New York estate sale of mine. That was the whole purpose of that stupid idiot intro, intro that didn't really work. There it is. Uh, Mr. Rick and I boy. <laughs> went down to New York, upstate New York. Uh, went down to upstate New York. And uh, we did a little bit of drifting, a little bit of uh, shopping, a little bit of estate sailing, a little bit of shoveling snow off our car because it was like of course the first weekend we decide to go down in four months is the day that it decides to snow like three inches and it's like oh uh <laughs> rick has boy bad hair he hasn't got it cut i don't know why he just hasn't got it cut mm -hmm. uh big hello to everybody who's joining us here for our two dogs digs hall pass uh, and especially big and i'm waiting for the bangs to get down to my chin you know, when we were younger, he had bangs, and I still had this hairline. He used to sit and put his head over top of mine and go, this is what you look like with bangs. So, um, he can do that again, but I'll smack him. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for popping in. Tina, who is a member of the Kennel Club, but for some reason, it doesn't let her be. I don't, We're not sure why. Donna, Lisa, Janet, Kathy, Fadiddles. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Mr. Carl. Heather and Bob and Sherry, my whatnot partner in crime. Uh, Susan, let's see who else we got. Kendra, thanks for popping in. Elisa, of course. Elisa's going to be joining us next Tuesday for What's Sold in uh, March. Yes. Uh, we are having a, a lady on, but also <laughs> we just had a lady on. But we're also having uh, um, a couple of uh, people and... Probably Sherry is probably going to be one of them um, to talk about whatnot in about, I think, two weeks. It's going to be two weeks from now to explain whatnot to everybody. But we also will have a Canadian seller um, who actually, Vintiquity is her name. Um, she is based in Vancouver Island. So she sells on whatnot from Canada. So we're going to have me, who's in Canada, but sells using the U.S. Sherry, who's in the U.S. and sells using the U.S., and Ventiquity, who uses is in the U.S. but sells using Canada Post, so we'll have. Yeah, she's talk. in Canada. Yeah, she's in Canada, in Vancouver Island. Um, Diana, let's see if I hopefully I didn't miss anybody else. Hey, Cameron, thanks for popping in, lady. Yes, it's a lady. Unenthusiastically, she's. <laughs> it's not unenthusiastically because I said, "Would you like to be in the show?" And she went, "I basically went, yeah." Sort of the same way that um, I think. Rick proposed, or I proposed to Rick. It was like, do you want to get married? Yeah, okay. Uh, that was enthusiastic. <laughs> um, oh, that's interesting. Tina's had a few more shows that you shipped direct to Canada. 
good to know. That's the one thing we always say to people who are in the U.S. who are watching us is uh, think about opting out of the eBay international shipping and just put in Canada on its own. You can do the rest of the world on like using eBay international shipping if you want. But for Canada, we also recommend it for Australia and the U.K. Um, you actually set up something where you can use pirate ship and use their simple export rate buy the postage yourself through pirate ship. And it's actually cheaper because the eBay international charges duties and taxes on everybody. And the thing is only about five to 10% of the packages that come from the States ever get stopped for duty and taxes. So it basically doubles the cost for those of us. Plus in Canada, those of us who are shopping in the U S we're already paying 35% exchange rate too. Um, but this weekend for us was, all about that. We all we went down to the states. Um, we did some shopping. We did some stuff where we were picking up some stuff. Um, we while we were there, um, I'm going to show you some videos that we actually did at the estate sales. Um, I'm going to see if I got something here. So we had this. This is what we sort of were looking for here. Estate sale. Estate sale. Now, um, funny thing is, I'll get we we actually found some linens. For our estate sale, which is part of our challenge still, which is the thrifting challenge, looking for linens for this month. Uh, so we will talk a little bit about that when we get to it. But we went to a few estate sales on the weekend, Rick. What was your opinion about how the weekend went? Uh, it was so-so. I wasn't impressed by the snow. I do not like trudging through snow to get anywhere. Uh, but all in all, the estate sales weren't that bad. Uh, the, the, the one that we thought would be problematic because of the wording in the ad for it actually turned out to be the best one we went to. Basically, the estate sale in their ad on estatesales.net. I forgot to said, screen cap the stuff too. Remember, you were supposed to remind me on Sunday to screen cap it. My brain. She no work. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no. So the estate sale ad actually said something to the effect that bags and boxes are not allowed. Pay for your purchase first, then you can go out to your car and get a bag or a box to bring in to pack your stuff up. We've been to one sale like that last summer. It was a pottery sale, high end ceramics and mid century modern stuff. You weren't even allowed to touch anything on the shelves at that particular sale. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be one of those where, you know, you have to wear white gloves or put in a request. Can I see that over there? Not like that at all. Craig has some video that he can show. Uh, it actually was a loaded house. And we were there probably five hours after it started. No, we were there an hour and a half after an it started. Half? We, were, we were afraid of it. So... First of all, okay. I think one, one thing that people may or may not be familiar with is what exactly is an estate sale, uh, like a live estate sale? Because a lot of people may go to uh, online estate sales now, especially since COVID, because a lot of them shut down. So um, you've got the ability to shop from estate sales on places like Highbid, iCollector, uh, Max Sold, or three different places that do them. Uh, for example, if you happen to be looking at Max Sold, I'm just going to show you this just as an example for Max Sold. Uh, when you're actually looking at a Max Sold page, you will actually see right in the titles of a lot of the things that they have, for example, they have here. This is a an estate sale. So this particular thing, some people look specifically at these because they're actually estate sales. We do them and we actually are resellers. So some of ours are listed as resellers. But uh, I know, for example, Adrian, who just popped in here, like Whitchurch Stouffville estate sale online. So sometimes these can be real estate sales, like filled with a ton of stuff that's just thrown all over the place. And it's on every shelf and corner. They haven't taken stuff off the walls. Uh, in other cases, some of those things that are done by places like high bid uh, can be much more uh, organi looking organized. But generally, an estate sale uh, is one of those things where the house has been taken over by somebody. So somebody's gone in and priced and said, like said to uh, co companies have gone into uh, the family and the family is doing one of a, a number of things. One, they are downsizing. Two, they are moving states or, or areas completely. Three, they did. Four, uh, they just 
uh, I don't know what a four is, but those are three big reasons <laughs> uh, that people do a lot of the downsizing. The Unfortunately, the, they did is actually one of the big ones because as the older generation is there, people have houses. So last week, that was a type of estate sale that you saw Donna and I in, which was the hoarder house. So that uh, David's downsizing went to them and said, I would like to be the person who sells all your stuff. And the person who owns the house gets a percentage. These are places we know a number of different people who do this uh, in a couple of different markets, actually, in the U.S. And uh, yes, go with, <laughs> go with the Raven. <laughs> they be dead. Uh, that's all I can think of. I mean, some of them, uh, three, they did. Everybody likes three. <laughs> well, if, well, they don't have to be dead. It's just... I, four is yes that was sort of what i meant by downsizing but four is nursing home yes um so you've got this all this stuff in a house now sometimes the houses can be very empty um we've actually been to a couple uh the way that we find estate sales so wait where is going so somebody comes in they say we'll take over everything and then we will sell it on your behalf usually in a certain amount of given amount of time so what companies will do is uh go to this is one of the big places that we actually find things for and anybody especially in, in in the us there's not so much in canada that using this but in the us this is a major uh, place to find what's going on uh, otherwise you have to just basically type you can type in the word estate sale into craigslist into facebook marketplace into uh kijiji and s see if there's any around but this is where we go when we go into the states anywhere, which is estatesales.net. Um, and so all you have to do is put in a, and this is, so we'll show you what this does. This is what's happening in Buffalo this upcoming week. You can search a few different ways on this. One, we always go to say, let's ha what's happening this week. So we only see sh sales that are happening in the next 10 days. Not a lot this weekend, cause it's Easter. Remember that um, you can do estate sales, moving sales. And then you go into stuff like this and you'll actually see the sales. So this particular thing, uh, we are, we know the people who run this and they were like, you got to come down next week. And I was like, we're not, but here's what they do. They've got 188 pictures. There's a big detail of everything. And then you can go in and see, and this is literally what you mean when you see a lot of estate sales, you see stuff, look, there's some Pyrex right there, Fridgies. Then there's some regular old Tupperware kind of thing. So you we go through these tons of jewelry. Oh, GI Joes. Uh, let's go. No, we're not going down. We're, don't worry, Rick. There's only three of these on this week. So this you, gives us a list. You can go by yourself. Yeah. That, then there's one in Clarence there that's going up as well. Two that are in Clarence. One by Caring Transitions, one by Stock Exchange. Uh, but we go to these this site. If you sign in, it doesn't cost you anything actually to um, join the site. Uh, if you sign in, you can actually favorite your actual um, things that you want to see. And then you can search on your phone because estatesales.net is also on your phone and it can route yourself from where you are. It'll give you a route so that you actually only see the ones you've already favorited. Um, there's estate sale auctions on high bid, Andrew's saying, but normal estate sales just don't exist there. Well, that's the thing we found actually happening a lot in Toronto now. And that's one of the reasons we actually traveled down into the States is because we found uh, that, that, oh yeah, yard sale treasure map is another one as well that you can use, that you can find estate sales listed on that. It's not as good as it used to be, but we still- Not them. all of the estate sale companies are putting their sales onto the yard sale treasure map yet. <laughs> and Marie was on the wrong Two Dog Steak show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Greg is saying, I don't think, I always think line up, sales get picked fast well that's kind of what we figure too we've been to a couple we were at one last year and we looked at the pictures and thought oh we gotta go to this a house that was jam-packed like just tons and tons and tons of stuff i think we might have even shown a couple of pictures from it i, I always forget to take the pictures because i'm too interested in shopping at it and it started at on a friday at nine o'clock in the morning and rick and i drove by at around uh, 12.30, because we had gone to garage sales and stuff like that. And at 12.30, there were still about 40 people in line outside of the house, still waiting to get in the house, because a lot of times you can sign up and get in. Like, you have to... There are people who get to the house at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I know there's people here who do it, too. 
I know that Heather and Bob sometimes go to live estate sales. She hasn't said something to do that. Yeah, Heather made a comment about um, you have to try to figure out which room the item you want is in based on the photos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very true because it was like, okay, I know I want what's in this room. Then you get in the house and go, how the hell do I find that room? And we the first or second person runs toward the thing they want. Mine. Yeah. Um, we actually, and again, I don't have the pictures of this, but one of the things that was at one of the sales we had, the sale we bought a lot at, had their entire front, uh, one of the pictures had, what are you, Holt Howard, like. Yeah, the pixie wear. Of Holt the pixie Howard, wear. pixie wear, as part of what they had. And it's like, Wow. Well, it was gone. It actually, and I talked to the guy about it, and he said, "What the second guy in the door basically ran, turned, saw it on the table, went mine, and he took everything that was there, so no one else could actually even get it. It wasn't priced cheap. So he told me one piece was four hundred fifty dollars, another piece was one hundred seventy five dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so now this sale actually had hold a hold table right behind the checkout." So they could monitor people putting things on hold and then going out to their car to pick up their bag after yeah. they paid. <laughs> um, Heather says, I tell Bob, you go this way, I'll go that way. Yeah, we actually do uh, some of the same times. We do, we'll, we Sometimes we'll do that. But um, a lot of times... I like to tag along so I can say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elisa starts at zero and they hand out, oh, that's a, the line starts at zero. Yeah, they sometimes, and they hand out numbers. So sometimes it's a huge line. Uh, some of the places we go to actually have a sheet that's at the front door where you actually write your names down. Um, but uh, I think in all yeah. the time we've gone, we've signed up on two sheets and then figured, why are we wasting our time? Yeah, in line just, when we could be going to another sale where these people aren't. And the thing is, the sale that had the 40 people lined up at it, we went back at like three o'clock, it closed at four. We went back at three o'clock. We walked right inside and we still spent about 150 bucks on stuff. That, that was the cookie jar house, wasn't that it? Was the, I think that might've been the cookie jar house, yeah. Um, Vinyl Mind says, looking forward to garage sale season a few more weeks yet. Yes, we were, that's the problem. It snowed on the Friday. There were no garage sales and we can't wait for that too because we, again, not even in Toronto, it's harder to find them in Toronto still, uh, but when we do the US, it's great. Carl says, I wish it was more competitive. I get freaked out by those situations. Well, yeah, Rick doesn't want to be in a lot of them where it's like, if it's too many people, he'll literally oh. turn to me and go, have fun shopping, and he'll go out. Oh, I actually called a lady out who stepped in front of me. <laughs> First time I've ever done it at an estate sale. This one, yeah, I will, I'm going to show you what we, we found, and then if, we could chat a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, so April can't wait for them either. Yeah, it's, it's so... Uh, and where he goes, we're on the opposite. We go near the end. We try it. Sometimes we go to both. But yeah, on a Friday when we're garage sailing and you're going to stand in line for two hours, it's like, well, wait a second. That's what we look at and go, I would rather shop at some more garage sales and come back because all of these people are going in there. And potentially, you sometimes think all the good stuff's gone anyway. Like everybody's going to grab it all and there won't be anything left for it. Why am I going to line up for two hours? Unless you end up finding stuff that you're just really surprised at. So um, in this particular sale, I'm going to show you some images of the stuff that we actually, this is our little haul, not a big haul, um, but it's a little haul. Uh, we got all of this stuff in the thing. This is not Christmas. It's not just said Christmas props, but it was not. It's, this is just the stuff that we bought. So we had this box filled with some stuff. These are actually two big under bed bins and it was in this one sale that we went to and rick was already down and said we were almost done and i said well did you see those big thing tin suitcases and he goes where so we went back up to the uh bedroom they were in a hall closet and i opened the hall closet and these were there these are uh vintage um under bed uh holders storage storage <laughs> they're nice five bucks each so we grabbed them both, or actually, yeah, and then we had to carry them out. Uh, Holly says she's spoiled. She has estate sales year-round, but your thrift stores are crappy. <laughs> there, so it kind of works out evenly for, for you and I. Um, what's the best day to go, first or last day? It's actually, 
I would think that if you had the choice and you were at them, you might even try both. Go, I would try. We try to go the first day usually, and when we go on the first day, we try to make sure that um, we go in the afternoon. If there's a lot of stuff, we go back the next day, and we've actually found great deals because some of the places actually uh, will drop their prices on day two or day three. So commonly, they'll be full priced on day one. They won't negotiate on any prices on day one. Uh, some places in, in the up, upstate New York area, some places go to 50% on day two. Some places go to 30% for the first half of day two and then go to 50% after one o'clock. Uh, some places go for three days and they go 30% off, 50% off. Some places go down to 75% off on the last day. So depends on how much they if are to clear sale, the house. If you're at a sale and you like what you see there and you see there's so much stuff that you think might be left over, just ask them, what do your prices go down tomorrow? And that's where you potentially go, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to come back on that. Yeah, they're probably saying 50, 75, 50. They're 175 or 50%, yeah. Uh, when I like the ones where it's so much stuff, they say just put together a pile, yes. not everything is priced. Picker sales are fun. Yep. Um, and in fact, we were at one sale, which is a one-day sale, and we were there at five minutes to one. And we know one of the people who works there. So they said hello to us. And then they said, have you got stuff? And we said, yes. They said, don't tell me you have stuff for five more minutes. And I said, why? And she, she, said, she, she had in her hand the 50% off sign. She was going to stick on the front door. <laughs> so we just sort of walked around and, ooh, look at this, look at this. And then when she put the sign up, <laughs> we said, Kathy. And then she wrote everything up for the 50% off. So, and that because they only had one day that they were doing the sale. So, I'm going to show you some videos now of like some of the stuff from the sale that we were I'm at. I'm going to let Mr. Doug oh. out again. Uh, I got three different videos. They're a couple minutes long. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able, if you'll be able to hear me talk over them or not. Uh, but I will try to say uh, something. Yeah, well, that's the fun thing about the hoarder house that we went to, right? That, that it's like, Piles to dig through are great. Um, and Kendra, I love the pile of making offer sales. We don't find tons of those. Fill a box. Yep, those are really good too. Uh, those are the really fun ones. Uh, so these are a couple of videos that we got from the one big sale that we went to. So um, I'll, I'll, when Rick comes back, we'll sort of recap the idea of the sale. So this is the main area. So this is this house was to, had oh 12 15 rooms. This is just they they literally put everything together by type. This room for them was their Christmas room. They had an entire bedroom filled with Easter stuff. We slowed down the video in here so you could sort of see this literal this is the living room filled to the brim and you can see it's also across the, this is four hours after the actual sale had started. And they said, you won't believe the amount of stuff. Like they, there was nothing underneath the table, but there had been tons of stuff underneath the table. So this was now from our standpoint, we didn't actually get a lot in this room, but this is just their Christmas room. Like that's how much stuff they had in their one Christmas room. Um, we didn't see a lot of vintage stuff in there. I did pick up, they did have a couple of Halloween tables. And I did pick up a couple of little Halloween things at those tables. But yeah, it's, it was. It was very much so many goodies. Very 80s, yeah. 99% um, of the sales have lots of Christmas. Yeah. Then there was this, this little thing, which again, I looked at. Nobody had really even looked at this. The entire thing was filled with uh, Hummel or Gobel angels. Um and dreamsicles and more Hummel figures, things like that. But uh, they didn't, they weren't, it wasn't that expensive either for all the stuff that they had in there. So it was just an interesting mix of stuff for that. This is a combination of the basement, which was the first place that we went into. And I can add you back in, right? And um, I think I also moved into the upstairs sort of decor area. Now, I will say this is also after we picked. So our stuff is here. We're going to show you some of this stuff. This is 
the basement. So again, stacked. The bar is stacked. Old stuff, new stuff. There's a guy with a flashlight making sure. This was more boxes of Christmas stuff that was in this house. So not only did they have the Christmas room upstairs, this was all, like, these boxes were filled with anything, like, a dollar or two for a dollar. There you go. On anything on the table, a dollar. So uh, you could find some really interesting stuff in there. Yeah, had we not recently done a couple of whatnot Christmas shows, I probably would have wanted to buy a lot more of the stuff. But we weren't really selling the stuff for high enough profit margin. So. Mugs, mugs, more mugs, like tons and tons. So this is just their basement. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I need it. <laughs> yeah, that stove. Hey, Joan, good to see you. Yeah, the nice thing about this house is that it was nice and clean, too. Yeah. There are no it's musty smells, kitchen. no dust. This is the kitchen. This was the living room area. So they put dolls and things like that from this in this area. And then they had all of their nicer stuff. Their glassware, their... Um, their kitsch, their decor, you can see. This was... Their knickknacks. Knickknacks. Now, here's the thing that was the most interesting about this sale. And Rick and I were sort of saying a little bit at the beginning. We've actually been to sales like that are... There's like one seller, for example, in upstate New York that we usually avoid. At least we avoid them on the first day because they're so overpriced. They price everything higher than eBay. Like, as a reseller, you can't make any money at it. Even as a collector, you it's like high price for collectors on stuff. Um, the, this table, for example, there are many spaces on this table. We're responsible for some of the spaces that are now <laughs> empty on this table. Um, they This brown thing, oh, that right there, that brown round table, that actually was originally where all the Hope Howard was, all over that table. Uh, and it was gone again. So uh, this, like lots of little things that we thought about getting, like in here, this was, I thought these were really interesting. This is was like plastic shaped flowers. It was a whole floral bouquet. And this whole floral bouquet was uh, $15. So for me, it was about five bucks too much. And it was one piece. Uh, but we did look, at, I did look at it. Um, overwhelming it kind of i mean rick actually uh came and and then went back to the car um edna louise if you go down to buffalo edna louise is the overpriced thing uh, but when we've gone in, to in our them, opinion in our opinion the second day they always have uh yeah seashell flowers alisa second day they always have uh um 50 off and that's where we sometimes do shop in there um uh, but uh the thing is, again, a lot of sales were recognized. The sale we went to, which was a company called Strobel Antiques. We've never seen, seen anything of theirs before. And the two things that scared us were seeing Holt Howard's without knowing of it. And two, um, seeing that they had this big strict rule. Wow. No bags, no backpacks, no big purses, uh, nothing allowed in. You had to put your stuff aside pay for it, then you are allowed to go back out, get a bag, come back in, and go to the packing area. So they did. In that dining room area you just saw, they actually had an 8 by 10 table with strips of tape along it, and people were putting their stuff into the strips of tape or into boxes below, and there was a guy basically standing right there so no one could grab somebody else's stuff. And uh, so when we bought, we put our stuff there, we paid, and then we came back in. And I actually came back in, for example, with um, to with, I came back in to, and I used one of these big tin things to fill it with stuff that we <laughs> we bought because that was the easiest way of doing things. Uh, so Rick, you did something that you clicked on something without telling. Oh, where to start? There we go. Uh, let's see. Now you bring totes. Well, we bring totes in the car. 
Are people supposed to juggle what they find and risk dropping it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you can juggle it, but they have this hold area. And a lot of them have them. They have a hold or, or sold area, uh, depending upon the size of it. Uh, there's a guy down there, a sales by Mario. He has great sales. They usually, in the summer, they have like five or six tables under tents that you actually put stuff in. That you, so you can find something big, walk out, put it there. And it's all it's all yours. And a majority of the sales that do have hold tables have a staff person right beside the hold table. Yeah. So there's little chance that something that you've set aside that you're going to buy will somehow be snuck away by another buyer. And Heather says well, that the house it, it, it does happen. Yeah, it can, but it hasn't happened to us. Um but uh, I just saw something else. Hold on. You had actually made a comment about Vancouver or something, Rick? Oh, they were. Oh, yeah. Hey, Vancouver. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. There are so many sales in the state sales around me. I only buy items that have a high sell-through rate now, keeping your average sale around $75. Yeah, there, I, there's lots of different ways people do shop the estate sales. I mean, there's we buy stuff that ends up in our house, that stays in our house for a while before it ever gets resold. Um, but uh, there's... Well, there's all sorts of different things you can buy. Um, we don't have a, personally, we don't have a $75 sell through, minimum sell through rate. We're trying to raise it up, but um, we buy stuff that we look that we find that might be cheap and think, oh, this is interesting. There's some stuff that I don't even bother looking up that I just grab. I'm going to show you the first thing that we did, but in, in the same comment. So we've been looking at this stuff and we go, okay, we're going to go to this sale. We went an hour and a half after it started and figured there'll be a huge lineup. Now it's snowing and we get a spot right in front of the house, like one car away from the driveway. And there are like 10 people in cars all around. It's like, in cars all around. Are these so, people go away and we'll call you in five minutes? That's what Rick was sure of. He was sure. Like, well, I bet you will get to really the front weird. door and we'll get to the front door. And then, uh, yes, Texan Ed the boil. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about women with purses? Well, they wouldn't, they don't want big purses. They weren't allowing big purses in. So if they can I guess if someone came in with a big purse, they'd say, I'm sorry, you'll have to take that out and bring your, just your wallet Maybe in. Maybe that's why people were in the cars. It could be. Sitting with the wife's car. purse. Yeah. Um, or yeah, it's, yeah, then fanny packs. Get it. They wouldn't have stopped a fanny pack, I don't think. Uh, but it was just, they, and again, this is how they said. So, uh, but we got it there and walked right in. And then walk straight downstairs. And the first thing I saw, this is what I mean about when you find something you just grab and you don't even care about. This is the first thing I saw down there. This shoebox. And then I see on the end of the shoebox. Make me big. I see on the end of the shoebox a $3 price tag for the box. And I'm like, um, patio coffee cups. An entire box. Of tons of colors of vintage cozy cups. Solo cozy cups. 10 ounce plastic cup. So we've sold these before. So these are these are the ones that have the little plastic like Dixie-like cups that sit inside them. You can find them all over the place. But there are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty, thirty some odd cups in here for Three dollars when we bought it. The guy who we said, Can you write this up? Because that's what they do. They have carry a little piece of paper, a receipt book, and they write the stuff up. And um, they write the stuff up so that you can actually take it, take the thing, and you take that to the cash desk to go out. So that's one of the things that we found. Um, I'm gonna go and show another, yeah, they are really good movie props. We sold those on our um. Max solds, and we've also sold them on eBay, but I think these might go on Etsy. Yeah. Uh, you hate them, but they're necessary. Well, I'm just going to, Rick, just chat for a second. I'm just popping to the other room. Is there something that you found that you wanted to show them that you found? Yeah. This was in the basement, and it is a set of canisters. I don't think they've ever been used. They still have the original wrapping in them. And 
You would not believe the insane price I paid for these. A whole four dollars for these nifty canisters. And they are Balanoff, Cleveland, Ohio, made in the U.S. They are fantastic. And I'm pretty sure I could probably get 50 or 60 bucks on Etsy. And then this is what I was just going to show you, just so you know. You can find really fun fanny packs at Cakeworthy. Like this one I just got. Look at the <laughs> size of my Willy Wonka fanny pack. So I can fit a bunch of crap inside this. <laughs> it's basically a purse. And if somebody wanted to look in it, it's easy to look at. But these are, uh, this is from Cakeworthy. I bought this for this summer specifically to, to be my estate sale flea market little pack so i can put in here batteries and my magnifying glass and all that sort of stuff that actually this is my willy wonka they have some great different things and diana bowen will know as you will know how great the stuff is at cakeworthy um, and cakeworthy actually has a sale on right now i think at the hamilton store but it might even be online yes you have to get to hamilton <laughs> yeah i'll just well, you never know what kind of golden ticket will get you down there. Look at the size of my Willy Wonka. <laughs> uh, Vancouver was just saying as well, another comment. I don't know who you are, Vancouver. So if you have a name that doesn't, you don't want to be called by Vancouver, then just let us know. Estate sales are good with pricing or spotting gold jewelry. Last one had cufflinks that were vintage and looked like gold. They were gold and you got them cheap. Well, that's, yes, that's the whole thing is uh, all people, um, Rick, what are you doing? Nothing. You're clicking on the things I'm clicking on. I paid five dollars and roughly about nine hundred sixty-five. Wow, that's great. Everyone will see my chocolate bar. You have Bob for cash and keys. Yeah. I, again, it's just an easy way to have an extra little something around. So that's my summer fan. So um, the next thing I'm going to show you is because we did talk about linens, and so this is the. Bedroom, and this is what you find a lot of times in bedrooms that you pop into. Let me see if it's this one. Uh, this one. So this was a linen thing, and we saw lots of this kind of stuff when we were there. And there is, like, just tubs. Tubs and tubs filled with stuff. And there, all over the bed. And this is something that we all, <laughs> I will sing that. I thought about it, but take a look at that. And again, this was a sale we thought it's Strobel's Antiques. It's a foo-foo sale. Rick just showed you something he found for four. I showed you something I found for three. Take a look at this. Tablecloths, $2. Drapes and curtains, $3. Linens, $1. Potholes are... And this is some of the fabulous things that we actually ended up picking up there. We don't know, like, we always look for sheets, but it's great when you can actually find flat sheets still in their package. This was $2. This is cheaper than uh, an actual thrift store. We also found this set, Lady Pepperell. The nice thing there. But I think the piece de resistance for us was actually something we don't normally look for, which is drapery. And it was in there. And this is some, I got to show you, this is the drape. We actually picked up drapes. Now, drapes can sell for amazing money, especially if you got a pair. And they were $3 for a pair. But take a look at, this is a couple of the things that we ended up getting. So this is a set. This, like these are never used. These are old JC Penny drapes. They still have the complete folds in them. They've never been washed. They're so crisp. There's the old no iron JC Penny logo in there. So that's a real that's a nice pattern. So that's nice. I mean, it's this one is an even bigger set and these are pairs set of two. Now they're really funky set. Now, th those actually would go in decor today. That 
type this of is cottage core, yeah. Definitely. And again, brand new, just sitting there. There's the one, here's the other. This pair is a little more um, foo foo, but these were three dollars each, and so I couldn't help but like Rick and I are going. We can't, we can't pass these by. Whether we will sell them, we'll have to figure out. But we just couldn't pass these by. This is again completely unused drapery sets. This has their big long drapes. This set. We loved. Take a look at that pattern. And again, perfectly crisp. There's the tag inside there from Sebastian Manor. We didn't yeah. bother looking up things like this when they're this crisp and this new, and they're three bucks. Like we, why would we bother looking them up? We just grabbed them. Now this is where they reminded me of you, Adrian. This is where. Part of the story came into play, but um, I'll show you. There's a couple more that I wish that they had two of these, but. Yeah, just remember, these were $3 a pair. A pair. So Look at Even the this. fabric alone would be worth more than that. This as fabric. This is a single. It is just, look at that. And it is for an old drapery rod goes in the top of that. But look at that. Beautiful. So we're gonna, we got they won't refold for me, obviously. And there's another one that says a rayon, green rayon. Look at the lovely drapes. Julian Noah Crown Gildan. So that was twelve dollars for everything you saw right there. Um, all of the drapes, all of the. So that's the reason that we look in different things, and why we always told you to look in the linen section. Um, hard to photograph. Well, we'll show you how we're going to do them because basically we have a drapery rod that we've hung up over our patio door. So we're going to slide them on that and drape them down. And we have the big uh, lights so we could people. Yeah, it's they could be using them for anything, but they could be using them for drapes. Um, one of the things that I just wanted to show you is just making sure because it's still in the world of the drapery and stuff like that is. And since we're in the linen challenge, I want you to keep in mind that with stuff like that, this was something I happened to see today. This was when I went there and I saw this in the, the linen rack. This was a tablecloth. But always take a close look at them because this is what I found as I look closer. It was really badly screened. So one half of it was screened well. The other half of it was screened poorly. So think about that when you're looking at stuff like that as well. With all of these... Again, we didn't worry about that because the screening was great. Uh, it just looked amazing. Now, we'll get into something else, and then we'll show you a bunch of our kitschy stuff. But here's the story that Rick was going to tell you. We got into this one room, and we were looking in this one room, and I bent down, and I saw a box. And the box said, craft kits. $4? Three dollars. Three dollars for the large one, two Three, for the small. Two for the small. And it was a Tupperware tub filled with Christmas cross stitching kits. Filled. There were um, two of them on the shelf. So I'm looking at them. They were on the floor. They were not easy to get to on the floor. I was standing there. I bent down. I pick the box up. I'm holding the box in my hand going, where can we put this so I'm not bending down to look at this? Rick is standing about a foot behind my shoulder. And what should happen? Rick? A, a, a pushy lady sort of shoved her way in between me and Craig. I'm facing a shelf that had another box of those. And she pushed her way in front of me and grabbed the box. It's like, no, excuse me. I'm not done looking at those. Oh, I'm sorry. He scared the hell out of that lady. I used my big boy voice. He scared the hell out of me. Like, I almost said here. Take me. I never speak up. I he usually never, speak ever up. Speaks up. Who the heck cares? Go um, in front of me. I don't care. And again, we don't... I guess I was hangry. Yeah. 
so she backed away. <laughs> and so I let, there were three or four that were on top that were opened and were bad patterns. Like I just know what's a good pattern and what's not, what not a good pattern. But this is what I ended up grabbing from it. So just so you can take a look and see. Um, we didn't look at all of them. I try and always grab quilting patterns and these are all sealed uh, yes they were still this was there, there. yes this uh, actually uh, was um actually this wasn't even at that estate sale this was at a different estate sale and it was about four hours after the estate sale started easily so i grab quilting things because quilting stuff can do well but i always grab stockings these are the things that can go for huge money now let me just show you i didn't know who this was i don't know who sandra gilmore I'm not even used to seeing Candemar designs. What I always look for is a thing called Dimensions Gold. If I can find Dimensions Gold, they are gold. They are really gold. Well, this is, ended up looking this up actually just for the show because I bought them because I just thought I'm going to buy them. Here is Candemar Designs Cross Stitch Gilmore. So I had to put the whole thing in. But here we go. I can see here is... One Santa kit, $84 sold, $75 sold, $65 sold. And I don't just have the one, I have two. Go back to the big picture, Rick. Yep, thanks. I have two. So there's $150 potentially for $3. More stockings. Got this one just because uh, it's okay for that. Another stocking. These are all at the same place. Got this? Because it's Jesus. It's a Last Supper. I have no idea what it's worth, but I thought, you know what? I'll get that. I will get this one, mainly because there was no way I was going to let her have that one. I got another stocking there. So I think we ended up with a total of 10 or 11. Yeah, we left Janlin for the pushy lady. Because <laughs> Janlin doesn't do as well for us in our history. So all of that for... Um, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, I think, roughly, 30 bucks. And one will sell for at least double that. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about linens and stuff as well, is to get to that section, go into that part of an estate sale, and look for linens, look for cross-stitch kits, look for things like that, especially look for pre-packaged things like this. I just sold on the Facebook group, Vintage Linens, I sold a, a blue set of full sheets, two full size sheets, almost this exact pattern, for $85 US that I picked up at Value Village. That was so, a, an auction on that. It was an auction there. on vintage uh, linens because you can do them on that. And if we had done it on eBay or Etsy, it probably wouldn't have gone that high. I don't think so, no. Tina's saying, watch for Ermin kits made in the UK. Scored two and one listed for $149. Elisa would have passed at 3 to $4 a piece. Stockings are almost a no-risk thing when you look at cross-stitch. I, the others, if they were open or they were poor patterns or they were felt applique, we don't do as well with those. Tree skirts too, yep. Always look for that kind of stuff. And as April says, always always pick up vintage sealed sheets. So um, next, or, and then I'll show you one just to show you something. And again, I'm talking about, I just picked this up today, part of the thrifting challenge. Um, I just thought this was so cute. I know nothing about it, but I think it's cute. This was $4.49 today. So it wasn't an estate sale, but oh my goodness, look at the puppy, Lenny. Don't pet it, but look at the puppy. This is such a cute set with little puppies. Look at oh, what you got out of focus. Look at the puppies. And again, the nice thing about a lot of this stuff when you're looking at linens, the creases are still in this completely. This is not, this has been taken out of a package and never done anything with this is brand spelt brand spanking new so that's we still got a few days left on that challenge so go for anything you want that you possibly can on that challenge i'm going to turn over to rick now to show you some funky stuff he found in that okay. main room in the main room yeah the one that, yeah oh good lord now you're gonna have me try to figure it out okay here's one of the things we found in the main room he did not want me to buy let's just show with this first oh okay this is a little cart, and it had um, seven glasses in it. Now, it only had seven glasses. I'm going to show you a better picture of the glasses. This is the little glass 
that they had. This is the little glass. Little cow. Little chicken. Little lamb. Little lamb. Uh, so this was actually in this little cart. And this was two hours after the sale. Three hours after the sale had been on. But take a look at what they were pricing this at. The cart was four dollars and the seven glasses were seven dollars so a buck a piece yeah which is okay compared to some of the new thrift store pricing yeah we still got 10 minutes 15 minutes left Hydran, so you still can catch some of us uh but yeah so that that set was eleven dollars and again to me it would have been worth that for this alone this drink cart is worth it alone. Like that's a $25, $35 thing. It's a little plastic drink cart. A little plastic drink cart, yes. Uh, I think Adrian thought that it was Italian. I didn't even look. We didn't look at anything. And a lot of these, we didn't do We didn't do any carling, no Google searching, no nothing. Oh. Like when you find stuff that's $3, you basically go, I'm grabbing this and I'm not going to, I'll figure out yeah. something later. It's like this little... This little heart dish with a silver spoon. It was $3. I thought, oh, that's kind of pretty. So I picked that up. Um, you all know about the Lucite candles we got at the thrift store. We paid 99 cents for each of these. And they are really, really pretty. So again, some of the people who aren't familiar with it, those were the things that we got. Our very first thrift store that we went across the border, we posted this in craft, yeah, and so we yeah. found a bin that had six of these, 99 cents a piece. Then Rick walked a little further down and found three more for 99 cents a piece with a gold flex inside them. They're a bit shorter. A little shorter. But... We pulled a red one for $35 for one red one on whatnot. <laughs> Those are, we're not sure where they're going to go. We'll probably try some of them on whatnot. And then we got this set of mint julep spoon straws. I do need to polish them a little bit. I didn't, this was one of the things that was a, I could have vetoed, but I didn't. This was Rick yeah. saying, this is what I'm going to get. Now, what do you mean by a spoon straw? Well, basically the spoons are hollow and you can use it as a straw. So you stir your mint julep and then you stick it in and then you can suck it up. That's all. Kentucky Derby Day. Yes. Very Canadian, isn't it? Tamara said the puppies came on that sheet came in pink as well. So this, I'm gonna have to talk to you tomorrow about a price on those. Okay, one that, of the other they all felt I think these are the candles they all fell off the table and smashed oh no uh one of the weird things that i often buy craig yeah what are you doing Pointing i'm just going your... through carl's never seen spoon straws before oh okay all right so one of the things that i often look for are cables and power cords this is actually a box of eight cords for those Christmas houses or Christmas trees. I got all eight of them for three bucks. And if you try to buy these online, they cost like 10 bucks each. So that's one way that we economize on uh, putting things together for Christmas. We make sure that we buy cheaper cords and marry them up with things that are missing the cords. Now, I found some stuff that when Rick had got those spoons, he said, I'm getting the spoons. Well, I looked at this and I thought, I like this. And he didn't want me to get it. Well, he went, we took all this stuff out to the car. Remember I told you I had that, we showed you those underbed bags? Well, we did our first purchase from these people. And we spent $100 at this place. And all the stuff that we had, which included the, the drink cart with the glasses in it, the stuff that Rick had, all of those sheets and drapes. We put those into the big um, tin underbed suitcases and took them out. But 
that he sat in the car and said, I said, I'm going back. I need to film some videos because I never think about that when I'm shopping. So that's where I got the videos from. And then I thought, I'll do a little shopping. Well, he had said no to this, which I thought was quite cute, especially because it had the little butterfly on them. And we've actually had people in our whatnot shows ask us for butterfly stuff. Well, not only that, but it's $3 and it was a Lefton. So again, as for our last thrifter to throw it, some Lefton's good, some Lefton's bad, but I wasn't going to pass that up for $3. And then what happens? A little further down on the same table, for $2, I found a matching Lefton little plate so or dish. So again, this will be great for us uh, for our whatnot shows uh, because it's light, it's small, it's decor that's easy to do. It may go on to anything else. Uh, we're, we're just not sure yet. Uh, there was a big room that we were in that I went when I went back and it was a china cabinet and the china cabinet I don't think anybody would open the china cabinet so <coughs> I looked in the china cabinet nobody was in that dining room there was nothing really there a big dining room table and the china cabinet I opened the china cabinet and I find these things which I thought were pretty good I don't know haven't looked them up yet but we're always saying when you look for teacups and saucers this was actually something I haven't actually normally seen so this is a really cute Teacup, bird on it. It has a little bird inside, but look at this. It actually has the Ainsley sticker. Ainsley. The Ainsley sticker on there too with the matching thing. So I have to look this up. This was a $6 risk on my part there, $6. Their other stuff they had was two and three. I didn't see any there. And then I saw this one. This is Paragon. And again, nice little set, Paragon, six bucks. I'm not going to lose money on a Paragon or Ainsley for $6, so I knew I had to pick those up. Um, but you also, in this same little thing, this is all stuff I found in this one cabinet that nobody seemed to go to. $2. Who are you? One dollar, little little dog. I have no idea. There was a marking on the bottom, but it's missing from it. It's the same, obviously, same company that made the one that made the other. One was two, and one was one. I didn't bother arguing. Little mouse, little glass mouse. These I thought were cute. This was again. I double checked. As always, check with these these little birds. Again, I got them because they're small, they're light, but. $2 again. One thing to always check on these guys is that the flowers are not broken off because this is the thing that can happen a lot with uh, bone china pieces is you'll find that these flowers will have one broken or chipped off piece. There's nothing if you add on those. And I got this guy too. Also $3. This one was 3 And this Stamp on the bottom, I'm not even, I don't even know if I can read it. It says from China, but I haven't even read the bottom of it. Did you ping the teacup? Yes, I pinged the teacup. I did ping the teacup in in the place. I did my ping. Ooh, you're getting better at that. Ping. Now we've got a question from Kendra. Yep. She's curious if we almost always sell glass on Etsy or sometimes eBay too. Mostly eBay and whatnot. We we're, we're, we are going to start trying to sell some on Etsy because we haven't in a while, but we're starting to use, especially with Crossless Magic, we'll probably be putting it on Etsy and eBay right away on both places. Because um, I know some people do really well with glass there. But on whatnot as well, you can do really that. Ping means, Rick, you can explain it. I don't have a teacup down here. Ping can means that when you're looking at any kind of uh, teacups, try and hold it as gently as you can so it can rock and ping it with your, your nail. Can you hear the ping? You can also wrap it with a knuckle very gently. You basically want to hear like a bell sound. If it clunks or there's no resonance, it means there's a hairline crack if it somewhere goes, in the mug and it may reduce the value. Yeah. 
So it means there's a crack in there. If it goes thunk, chuck it away. If it goes thunk, it's probably some junk. Uh, now, I have no idea about these. I had to buy them. They were 50 cents a piece. I don't even know what they are. Salt dishes. There were eight of these cute little salt dishes. I didn't see it. Oh, this is the set oh, round this is all the stuff round three. Yeah. I bought. And the thing is, a couple of them came with the little glass. So, or your soul. But there's two blue, two rose, and two pink, and two yellow, or two white and two yellow. But it also is calling them salt cellars. I don't know what they are. They said salt. They said salt bowls, and I thought, what oh, I'll salt? buy that for a dollar. Salt cellars. <laughs> but yeah, I'll buy that. Only two of them have these, though. I'll buy that for a dollar. Why? Because I can. They're small. They're light. And again, I'm always looking for stuff now, especially for whatnot for decor shows that we'll be doing on whatnot. Um, I also bought one other thing in there. Which I had to pick up, and again, I just got these because we do we've done some good stuff with vintage Christmas. This was actually six dollars for the pair, so really cute angel set. They are cute. So again, six bucks. So this is really surprising to us. The stuff that we were finding in there, the spoons are harder to get. Individual salts, the sell sellers are more of the master salts, much bigger. Oh, okay, I have to learn more. I have to, again, sometimes I buy stuff which I don't even know what I'm buying. I, I, I just buy it because it's like I have to buy it, right? There's things you just have to pick up. Okay, um, I found a couple of cute things just so that people aren't thinking that you were the only one shopping. Oh, no, uh, we shopped. Is, this is a, a different estate sale. And basically, this little, little piggy bank was sitting on the table beside a little baby porcelain girl. Now, it's a locking piggy bank. Piggy bank. I do have key, a key for one of them. So we've got the baby baby's bank girl. And the baby's bank boy. This is actually blue. The other one is pink. And a little handle. I thought those were pretty cute for five dollars each. Yeah, I so the thing that we're really trying to make sure that you think about here is when you're going to estate sales, take a look at all of the rooms that you that are around. Don't um, don't be afraid to to ask what the price are going down. You can ask for a negotiation if they don't have one. Most of the places will say no, we're not gonna let you do that. But we got all this stuff to just show you that we don't we are random resellers we you saw tons and tons of toys last week this week you saw none and that's because we didn't find anything that was toy related um we found all this stuff that was china and tchotchke and decor and christmas and all these sort of things rick did find this which again this is not a toy <laughs> this is a little mug it's Adam with a little fig leaf. A little fig leaf moves <laughs> up and down. No markings on it, but the fig leaf moves. There's nothing under it, unfortunately. Same sale. There's a sticker on the back, right? How much was that guy? A dollar, I think. No, he was three. Three. Look at the little bum. <laughs> oh, Joan says the Ainsley cups are Pembroke pattern. Oh, yep. okay. Um Now, oh. there was also this. It was hanging on the wall. Yeah, take stuff off the walls. Ask them if you can take stuff off. <laughs> it is marked Japan. No chips on it. I thought no it was chips. gorgeous. And it was nine. But yeah, it is back really up a bit to see it in the camera, Rick. Right? Oh, sorry. So it's a really wall. cute little wall pocket. Violin wall pocket. Yeah, it's a wall pocket. It also can sit flat on a surface. Yes, a wall pocket of uselessness, which most wall pockets are pretty useless. Too. Now, I did find two pieces of Christmas. <laughs> kind of silly, but I found Bert as Santa Claus and a little tiny wooden mouse. 
They were yeah. 50 cents each. I and had to buy other, two things for a dollar. The only other Christmas thing I found, which happened to be in that linen room, was this one little thing. It's a hanky with a that was 50 cents for me to buy with a little point set on it. But so <laughs> lots of fun, interesting stuff like we used to do. One of the things we also showed you while we were there. I, and I do have a question. Okay. I bought these. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell they are. Neither did I. <laughs> they are little wooden cups. Pestle, mortar and pestles. They are probably for crushing something. But what do you think they are? I got six of them. In a box. Starting bid. They were a dollar. So. <laughs> Alyssa. Um. I don't think any of those are going to compare, mind you, at the end of the day to our probably our one of our biggest, our best finds yet for the day. And that was, if you were on our Facebook post, you saw this. I did a thrift it or throw it on this particular thing. Sitting in a cart at the Goodwill, there was this set of uh, four piece. It's a, like a 16 piece four place settings for $25. It's this sun moon look. Uh, it had a set of four bowls, four plates, four salad plates, and four cups. Um, I They were in excellent shape. There's a couple of little bit of wear pieces to it. I'd never heard of this brand before in my entire life. 1993, a thing called Vitro Master. And this is the reason that we always you try and use things like Worth Point or um, uh, eBay Solds. This is the past, just the past 30, 90 days of these for eBay solds. This is not even a full set. This is a partial set, $175. Six mugs, $64. Some plates, $89. Well, we asked people, we already knew that when we asked, I had already looked it up. I said, there's no way I'm passing up a set of 25 for $25 of this. And the great little thing on it because the select people said look always celestial and things like that um but yeah that's i think one of the reasons the mugs sell is because of the fact that they have that on them they're in really really good shape april says ah the celestial motif in the 90s i remember when you went crazy when they're in their bedroom <laughs> now, those dishes are amazing uh, it's interesting that the mugs sold yeah for 65 bucks for a set of six mugs that's i mean that's the that's that's one of the reasons I looked. I went. I can split these into all sorts of different things, yeah, and sell them as two sets of eight, two eight piece settings. We might try a set on Max Sold. I don't know what we're going to do with them yet, but we weren't going to pass them by. I actually looked on Worth Point, and I'm sorting price high to low. A sixteen piece set still in package, five hundred bucks. Wow! You got to make that a way bigger, Rick, because no one can read it. Oops, sorry. Oh, wrong screen. Give me a sec. Uh, better? Yep. Nice. More. 16 pieces, 13 new, $3.99. Yeah, just in time for the eclipse. Never even thought of that, but yeah, that's it's funny to see what goes around, comes around too. Yeah, but that's actually a really good point, Susan, the eclipse. Um, I don't know if anybody would be able to sell them in time to get them for the 8th of April, but that's the thing. You never know what you're going to find when you're looking at an estate sale. You may find a bunch of stuff that you just go, okay. And you might find stuff at a thrift store you don't think about. And you go, I'm going to look this up. Something grabs your eye. Something grabs your eye like an image that looks like that. And you just go, I got to look at that. It just came out on the, the cart. Something that, something like a salt thing with little spoons in them. You go, oh, those are kind of neat. Little puppies on a, on a thing. Fabulous looking fabric stocking needlepoint a cart with cards in it mint julep spoon straws anything along those lines you never know what you're going to look for but that's what we always or at the end of the day what about a chamber pot a to piss in. <laughs> so that's something else rick decided they had to pick up this was a dollar 
So well, keep your eyes open for that kind of stuff. Make sure that hopefully at some point you will be able to have some kind of uh, estate sale of mine coming up for you as you get closer into the summer. If you do take a drive or anything like that, have some fun with it. Go to one of the sales. Go a little later in the day if you just don't want to be focused on too many crowds or anything like that to take a look at them. Even if it just says on, on, on the in Facebook that it's a family-run sale. Rick bought those two little banks from a family run sale. And it was just some people at a trailer park who were moving. And they That's just were the only to thing we bought from the only thing we bought in the whole place. Uh, yes, we didn't know what kind of pot it was. Uh, and yes, that's us. So random. Um, add the masquerade treasure hunt books to this lot. <laughs> so it's a great thing to do. Have a little fun out of state sales. Join us next week. We will be doing our what sold in March with uh, the at Lisa Goldman joining us. So LOL, so random that she'll be joining us. And we will have one or two other people joining us as well. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Adrian and Carl or just Carl or just Adrian. We're still going to figure that one out. because, And we're going to be asking people in craft for their what's uh, some of the stuff they sold in March. And then in two weeks, we will be doing a why not, what not? Why you're not looking at what not? And we'll have some people on to talk about what's good about what not and why you should think about using that as a new platform. Make sure you're looking at everything in craft as well. Thanks to everybody who supports us here in the uh, Kennel Club, three bucks a month. And hopefully we've given you some stuff today that you thought, I never would have picked that up. I've never, now I, that's enough for me to say, I can pay Craig three, three bucks and Rick three bucks for that. Kind of like buying a latte. And you know what? We're less than a latte nowadays. Oh my God, we're less than a coffee at a Tim Hortons. Like that's the thing. We've picked up two coffees and two bagels, and it cost us $11 in the States. Oh, my God. It was twice as much as... And that was U.S. dollars. Ah! So Rick put the link there, but we'll see you all around. Hopefully, you'll have a little bit of fun with your sales. Make sure if you do find anything neat, post it in craft, or you can talk to us about it here. Uh, send us a link, and we'll show it on one of our shows. We'll see you soon, as we now have to organize all of this and figure out how we're going to sell some drapes. That's this week's goal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's looking at me badly now. Now that we've got him. No, I'm not. I, I, I participate.